Hi there! Uh, welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. In the last one, we met Sherlock's, oh, sorry, Herlock's new client, the lovely Miss Evie Vigil, who's investigating, or who's, well, wanting us to investigate the disappearance of her husband, a Daily Vigil. Which is kind of a weird name, to be honest. Daily? Or at least for her first name, it's a bit weird. But yeah, uh, we got some, you know, and of course, you know, I guess Herlock wants us to do his dirty work. <laughs> Mostly because he dyed his hair and he looks kind of silly. I mean, I think it look, he, he makes it look good, but I imagine dyed hair would probably uh, be seen as kind of an oddity back then. So, our first lead, as it were, is at the prison governor's office at Barclay Prison. Hopefully, hopefully he'll uh, be willing to talk to us and tell us about, you know, the guy who went missing. Because, you know, he worked there at the prison, as we as we figured out. I don't know who's talking here, but... Uh... Barclay Prison is on the outskirts of London, backing onto a, a lonely burial ground. Its four high outer walls loomed quietly before us in the fog. Having requested a meeting, we were shown to the governor's office in the watchtower. I guess it's probably a Nosuke talking. Huh. Nice place you got here, I, I, I guess. I mean, you got some nice furniture, you know, a nice mahogany desk. That clock is uh, interesting, but it also kind of looks like a fucking uh, medieval dungeon, uh, which I mean, maybe, you know, maybe that's just your aesthetic, but, huh. Like, it's, it's definitely something. Also, huh, that clock is like the fucking uh, guillotine, is like... That seems a little bit in poor taste, but uh, also really cool at the same time. Uh, this place is full of hardened criminals. I cannot remember. I cannot remember the last time a civilian was doing here. What kind of fucking accent is that? And you did not want to talk to an inmate, but to me. Oh, hello. Hmm. God, he looks like fucking, I don't know, J. Jonah Jameson if he was, like, swole as fuck. Do you ken who I am? I'm the governor, Barry Caden. Um? Barry Caden, really? That's a, okay, I, I know, I like that, actually. Barry Caden, that's a, you know, it sounds like a, real, realistically, like a real name, but it's also a pun, so, you know, I, I like that. But again, I, 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 it sounds like a, I think Ken is like a Scottish term, right? So, uh, I'm gonna do some kind of Scottish accent, which, uh, you know, I don't know if that's gonna turn out very well, but, oh well, I'll, I'll, I'll do my best. Oh, uh, e yes, it's a pleasure. I'm Ryunosuke Narihodo, defense lawyer. And an Easterner, I see. <laughs> and an Easterner, I see. Okay, no, I don't think a Scottish accent's gonna work that well. Does that mean... Yes, I'm a visiting student of law from the Empire of Japan. Japan? Did you say Japan? Um, yeah. Oh, Jesus. Well, there's not any of your kind in, any of your kind in here, laddie. Maybe you should try the prison next door, eh? There's a prison next door? Uh, I didn't notice another prison next door, sir. Anyway, we came to ask you some questions about... I do not like to be so direct, but I have no intention of speaking with the likes of you suspicious looking Easterners. Well, that's a little bit prejudiced, don't you think? Yeah, you can't just turn your back out of me. You can just turn your back on us like that. Now get out of my hair. So as soon as he finds out that we're from Japan, he reacts like this. That surely means He's the uh, racist, I guess. I think it's because of the professor case. You think so too? Oh, well, I guess there's that too, but also the racism thing. Ten years ago, Genshin Asogi, also known as Professor, was incarcerated at this prison. And then, after his execution, he apparently re-emerged from his grave in the cemetery behind the prison. I... 
I might have known. You're sniffing around to boot that case, aren't you? Again, okay, so, please, uh, I know my voice acting is not, you know, professional quality, but I hope you won't get too mad about how this guy's gonna sound, because, I don't know, man, I just, uh, I don't know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll have to practice on a Scottish accent, uh, you know, in my spare time. Your agents, eh? Uh, part of the professor's great web, no doubt. No, not at all. We're just... Uh, get gone with ya, before I punch your lights out. We're going, we're going, Jesus. Hell, the ghost of that killer still haunts this place. We're not going to get anywhere here. Unless we can somehow to prove, somehow prove to this man that there's nothing suspicious, suspicious about us. Governor Caden? What are you thinking, Mrs. Otto? I feel sure that name came up in conversation recently somewhere. I was wondering if whoever mentioned him might have some ideas to help us. Come to think of it, I have the same feeling. Oh, Jesus. Okay, fine. I, I, guess, we're not I guess we're not gonna talk to him right now. Oh, God. He doesn't want us to examine anything either. Okay, fine. Okay, uh... Well... Here? Okay, uh, well, well, here's not gonna do anything. We've not, this isn't gonna help us. We already talked to Lord Strongheart once, and I feel like he's probably not gonna have anything much more to add, so... Uh, I guess here? Maybe? Oh, hey, look at that. Dear old daddy is, uh, just waiting around or reading the fucking paper, I see. I, I see. Isn't that something? Uh, maybe he, maybe he has something useful to offer us. That's Professor Mikotobo over there. Ah, hello, you two. I was just taking a moment. Oh, my God. See, this is where me not being able to, uh... Record consistently is really gonna fuck me over because I still, for the life of me, cannot recall the voice that I gave him. Because, like, I swear, every time he comes up, I just. I come up with a new voice. Ah, hello, you two! I was just taking a moment to catch up on the world now that I'm unpacked. But where's Judge Jagoko? Yes, well, mm, mm. He's not the relaxing sort. He's taking himself to. He's taking himself off to pay his respects to all the legal bigwigs. Having only just arrived in the country today? Goodness, he is full of energy. <clears throat> um, Professor, you mentioned something before. About how you'd known the prison governor at Barclay Prison. Ah, Governor Caden, you mean? So it is the same man. Father! We must speak with the governor. But he refused to talk to us. He said we were suspicious Easterners. <sighs> well, I'm sure if I accompanied you, it would be a very different story. Oh, would you? That would be wonderful. Uh, if you have time now. Sadly, as you can see, I'm very busy at the moment. Bro, you did. What do you mean you were busy at the moment? You were just reading the paper without a care in the world. Busy drinking coffee on a comfortable settee. Ah, now, now. Huh. I have rather a lot to prepare for tomorrow, you know. Oh, so, sorry. I didn't say that out loud, did I? <laughs> you may cut up as alarmingly good at reading people's thoughts. Uh, could it be that you, uh, that you Narahodos are alarmingly bad at hiding your thoughts? Ugh, goddess as always, Sazato. Well, let's not fall out now. I have an idea. What's he writing on, the pa on that piece of paper? Here's a letter of introduction for you. Hopefully when he sees my name, he'll change his tune. Ah, thank you! The letter of introduction has been entered into the court record.
Good luck then. Now you have fun fucking just chilling on the fucking nice sofa. Or SETI or whatever it's called. But oh well. Um, let, let, let's examine that, that letter of introduction real quick. I wonder, I'm curious what he actually says. Oh! It looks like this is some sort of steamship ticket. The SS Rouse. First class cabin. 001. Yokohama departure, 11th of September. London arrival, 1st of November. Ah, that's the boat that Professor Mikotova and George Jigoko came on from Japan, isn't it? Yes, I think it called at Dunkirk on the north coast of France for a night before finally arriving in Dover. To think, oh, it's been almost a year since we arrived in Dunkirk uh, in Dover on the SS Pura. Oh, it seems a shame to not keep your ticket as a memento of your trip, don't you think? Yes, I agree. I have mine safely in my diary. And I keep mine in my wallet, so I have it with me at all times. Oh. Well, how strange. Where could it have gone? Are you like this on purpose, Mr. Narahodo? Did I imagine it? Or was that... Was that comet accompanied by a little sigh? Oh, hey, we actually, you know, we did need to examine it because we, you know, it updated our evidence. Well, that's handy. <laughs> what about this? Professor Mikotoba has wonderful handwriting, doesn't he? Are you sure? I literally can't read what that says. I don't know if I'd call that l wonderful. This, this, ugh. this dark-suited young man is not in the least bit untrustworthy. Is it just me, or does that make me sound extremely untrustworthy? I do wish he called you at least a, a nice young man. <sighs> I'm really not sure that would help. Yeah, thanks for the fucking ringing uh, uh, endorsement, Mr. Miko Professor Mikotaba. But perhaps you'll speak to us now. Yo, uh, Mr. G Gary Governor Caden, check this shit out. If you just cast your eyes over this, Governor Caden. Ah, what's this sin? You cannot pour the wool over my eyes, you good for nothing Japanese student. Me, Mikotaba. Hmm. That. That young jock from the French Forensic Laboratory. That Mikotaba. Yes, exactly. Him. Oh dear. Perhaps I should have said something sooner. I mean, you are his daughter. I'm Eugene Mikotoba's daughter. Uh, Suzata. Uh, James! You're the young man's daughter! James. James indeed. I did not think to mention that before! I, uh... I do apologize. I, I, well... <sighs> you best take a seat then. Can I offer you a cup of tea, perhaps? And do not forget to try one of these, uh, wee handcuffed biscuits. Handcuffed biscuits, huh? Uh, didn't, didn't take you for the, for the baking sort, but okay. Huh. Your father's influence is nothing short of amazing. I'm bitterly regretting not announcing who I was from the outset now. So then! What can I do for you that do for you, Hin? Well, um, we're currently investigating a case. It's one of your warders, you see. He's gone missing. Missing? That's right. It's surely been reported to you as well, being the prison governor. Uh, you, um, you, maybe not? I have not heard nothing of the sort. There's no missing persons in my prison. Oh! But... How can that be? It's Mr. Daily Vigil, your chief warden. Eh? Uh, Vigil? That's right. His wife came to us and asked us to investigate his disappearance. Let's skip the part about him only going missing yesterday for now. Uh, 
clearly that, clearly that means something to him. Would you be so kind as to tell us what you know, sir? Aye. Aye, of course. Alright, well, at least he's now he's not threatening to, like, kick our ass. So that's pretty cool. But also, I, I do kind of want to examine this room a bit. It is... It's definitely interesting. This, this grandfather clock is... It's fitted with a terrifying blade that keeps dropping down. Oh, fuck. Yeah, sorry. It's smuggled on the guillotine. A French execution device. You might have heard of it. And yes, before you ask, it can drop. Heads off, you mean? Avers, no! You know, carrots and parsnips and so forth. Oh. Huh. If you place a large carrot on the bottom there in the morn, uh, by evening, huh, it'll be cut clean in two. It's not exactly the most efficient uh, cutting device. Well, huh. The blade must have an almost indescribable edge to, on it, then. I, I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't exactly go that far myself. An axe, a hunting rifle, and four pairs of handcuffs. That's a daunting collection. Ah, there's a story behind every one of those. You mean... The rifle with a famous killer's murder weapon? And the axe was wielded by an infamous executioner? And the handcuffs were once used to immobilize a fierce, four-legged beast when it was arrested. I think you're in the realms of fantasy now, Mr. Narihodo. Man, his, uh, his imagination does seem to uh, one run wild at times, does it? Doesn't it? Eh, not those kinds of stories, Jimmy. That axe was once. That axe was what I used to chop down the cherry tree at my house. Mrs. Mrs. Caden, Mrs. Caden was was not best pleased. <sighs> and the cuffs on the left are the ones I caught my first burglar with back on when I was a bobby. And the cuffs on the right are well, <sighs> well, me and that's when me and Mrs. Caden like to get down to business, if you know what I mean. <laughs> the stories were a little different to those you imagined, I think, weren't they? Yes, to my. Relief, and in some small way, my disappointment. Yeah, I mean, I guess sometimes, you know, you know, telling stories to scare yourself, you know, even if they, when they aren't based in reality, they a small part of them, a small part of you is, you know, kind of just disappointed. Let's see. Oh wait, that that was the one I wanted to click on. I suppose these are all former governors of Barclay Prison, are they? <sighs> Either that, or former inmates who the governor sent to the gallows. Oh dear. They all have such severe expressions. <laughs> I really couldn't deny either possibility. Especially the one on the extreme right. His expression goes beyond severe into a whole new territory. That one's me. <laughs> oh. I'm... I'm terribly sorry, sir. Is it a prerequisite of the job, perhaps? Having a se severe expression, I mean. Of course it's not. Although, uh, it is taken into consideration. A lot. Yeah, I mean, a severe expression is one way I'd use to describe your face. I'd never have expected to find a parrot in a prison. It must be the governor's pet. Given where we are, it's hard not to see the poor creature as a prisoner. No, you don't! Do not kill me! Ah! Has... Has the bird learned to mimic the plaintive cries of the inmates in the cells? Ah, oh, no! He is one of three siblings, you say. And he still calls out the two names of his... The names of his two brothers like that all the time. That's not much better. Right. Let me out! Do not, do not kill me! Aye, aye. I hear you, laddie. You want your dinner, eh? <laughs> Didn't I do it? Oh. Is that, is that, was that the, are those the names of his, of the two other parrots? 
let me out, do not kill me, and then did not do it. Huh. That's kind of morbid, but also kind of funny at the same time. It's a very large cabinet full of papers, isn't it? It's labeled Inmate Register. Look! And all the files are in alphabetical order. That's 50 years of worth of records of Barclays Inmates. Why do you keep turning your back to us, man? Whether or not, whether or no, they left alive after serving the term. All the details about the crimes they committed are recorded in, the, in there. Like an epitaph, you might say. A record of crimes and punishments. How dispiriting. And yet... This man seems to be enjoying tea and biscuits as he talks about it. Also, nice deer head you got here. That deer has been staring at me for a while now. It has? The poor thing can't fit through the small hole in the wall. Ah, but it can't get its head back out again now either. It's giving me a woefully imploring look. Um. I feel like... I, I, I guess Ryanosuke is not familiar with the pro with the idea of, um, you know, having hunting trophies and the like. It's not real, Mr. Narahoto. It's stuff. What? I... I mean... Um... Yeah, of course it is. For a moment, I thought it was another assassin sneaking in via the ventilator. I don't like to say, but... I think perhaps you need to reread the adventures of Herlock Sholmes. What does that have to do with me being a dummy who doesn't know about taxidermy, apparently? I feel like those two things are not exactly related. Oh, no, sorry. Ugh. Uh, let's see. So, about about, about Mr. Vigil. What, 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 can, can, what is he like as an employee, sir? We understand that Mr. Vigil is the chief warder here at the prison. Aye, that he was. Strong sense of responsibility, and dedicated to the job, no doubt about it. He was a fine warder. Sorry, <laughs> did you say was? Yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking. Uh, what is, what's, what, what's that was about? Hmm. Aye, he does not, he does not work here no more. He left the job. Oh my. Uh, when was this exactly? Ah, uh, there's a question. When was it about? That cannot have been much less than... Ten years ago now. I'm sorry, what? Ten years ago? But... Hmm. Uh, didn't... I'm sorry, that, uh, didn't she say something they'd been married for 15 years? And... Okay, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just a, I'm a little... I'm a little... I'm a little shocked, you might say. What? T ten years ago? He stopped working here ten years ago. Aye, as I mind it. Dear Ken, I had not heard the fella's name in all that time. That's a word if he's gone missing, though. But... But Mrs. Vigil made no mention of it. I think perhaps, Mr. Narahodo, that his wife simply doesn't know. I think she's unaware that he no longer works here. Governor Caden, uh, can you tell us what happened? Why did Mr. Vigil give up his job here? Uh, that's, uh, important, is it? Yes, I believe it may be. What are you thinking, Mr. Narahodo? I can't help wondering, given that it was ten years ago, ah, which was exactly when the professor was being held at his prison. Yeah, that does, that, that does, uh, you know, that definitely cannot be a coincidence. So Mr. Vigil actually resigned from the position of Chief Warder 
Ten years ago, you're telling us. What happened to make him leave the job? In actual fact, uh, he did not leave the job willingly. He had no choice in the matter. You mean he was dismissed? It was uh, after a particular walk. Sorry, a walk? Aye, that's all, that's all the word for it in here. A walk to the gallows. And an execution. It's the job of the Chief Warder to prepare the gallows tree and oversee any executions, you see. Only... Vigil did something unthinkable on their last walk he was manning. What did he do? I'm sorry, but... I cannot, re I cannot reveal that information. How do you say that? Canae? Canae? Cana? Canoe? <sighs> but I can tell you... It's very rare for a chief warder to be relieved of his post. But why wouldn't Mrs. Vigil know about it? She appears to be under the impression that her husband still works here. I would not ken anything about that, I'm afraid. Can you perhaps answer one more question about the circumstances of his dismissal? And what would that be, Hen? That last, ex that last execution that Mr. Vigil was responsible for overseeing. Was it by any chance... The Professor's? My fault, exactly. And mine as well. I just didn't verbalize them. <sighs> I'm sorry, I really am, but I'm not at liberty to answer that. I see. So that's probably a yes, then. <laughs> The fact that you, the fact you're not at liberty to answer that basically means, you know, yeah. My father came to Britain all those years ago in order to study forensic medicine. But you seem to have been well acquainted. Ah, the dead room, the prison, and the cemetery have a lot to do with one, with, with one another. After all, they need the fresh corpses for forensic research. The kid. Uh, yes, I can imagine. The advancement of medical science isn't always particularly palatable. Yeah, I, yeah, that's for sure. Your father worked in the laboratory, just on the far side of the graveyard. In the basement of St. Sinners. Yeah, it's still in use today. St. Sinners. That's come up before, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, Dr. Scythe worked there as well. Yes, that's right. We've been there. Oh, is that Oh, yeah, wait, we've been there? Is that where Herlock was, uh, you know, treated for his bullet wound? Ah, uh, Mikotaba and I after used to ride at a carriage together and negotiate terms. For more fresh material, I suppose. Aye, and we used to sit here, sit in here for hours and gab all about deception and all sorts. Ugh, it takes me back. Over a pot of tea. And a plate of cuff biscuits, of course. How charming. Uh, yeah, that's one word for it. <sighs> he was a good fella, your father. Reliable and dead set on his work. He was. Um, I can assure you that uh, Professor McCulter was still alive. Uh, but I'm afraid. I'll never understand you, Japanese. Because of Genshin Nosogi, I suppose. Yeah, most likely. Eh, well. I cannot tell you anything else. Thank you so much for your time, Governor. Oh, uh, one moment before you're away. Before you're away, Hen. Oh shit, he's going in, into his cabinet. Also, damn, he carries an axe. Oh, so he carries an axe on, on, on his person, too, huh? I'm sure I have it here somewhere. Ah, I uh, found it. Here, take this as a wee souvenir of your visit to the prison. What is it? That's Vigil's dismissal notice. It's ten years old now, of course. 
Oh my! Are you sure? Aye. It's no trouble at all. It's not the original mind. Huh. Thank you very much, Governor Caden. Eh, well, in return... Do me a favour and uh, never come back here. That case is closed. Huh. Well, I think we ought to return to Baker Street for the time being. Yes, I agree. We need to report back to Mr. Sholmes of what we found out about Mr. Vigil. What will he tell Mrs. Vigil, I wonder? Hmm. Let's check out that dismissal notice, by the way. Chief Warder Daily Vigil is relieved of his post with immediate effect for having violated Clause 132 of Her Majesty's Code of Conduct for Prisons. All rights to redundancy pay and other financial benefits are fully revoked. Aiding and abetting the escape from this prison of convict blank just prior to his execution. Details of this escape are still being investigated. Full cooperation with inquiries will be expected. Indications are that the jailbreak plot was conceived prior to the convict's incarceration. It's believed that the convict engaged in some form of negotiation with the prison staff in order to secure assistance. Full disclosure of information regarding these negotiations will be dismissed. Or demanded. I'm sorry. Huh. So he was fired because he uh, helped a convict escape right as he was about to be executed. And it seems like the some of the prison staff were also in on it. That's, uh, well, pretty suspicious, I might say. Hmm. Though, though it seems like uh, Mr. Caden was not, in fact, in on the plot. So I wonder. Well, again, he didn't, he didn't want to say it, and uh, this report doesn't confirm it. But I, th I think we can fairly assume that this has to do, do with the professor in some way, right? Or, you know, uh, Genshin Nosogi, to be exact. Which uh, has a lot of interesting implications for, well, what exactly happened <laughs> all those years ago, you know? But I, I, I get a feeling, a little, you know, a, a, a slight inclination that that's going to come up in the future of this case. Which is certainly quite interesting. Hmm. Either way, uh, I guess we can report back to Sholmes, um, perhaps if he's still there. Um... Although, yeah, at least that Barry Caden, you know, he, he didn't exactly have the leave, leave the nicest impression on us, but he wasn't altogether that bad once, you know, he stopped thinking we were suspicious Easterners or whatever. <sighs> oh well. I think we'll leave things off for now. Um, like I said, this one was a little, this episode was a little longer than the last one, which was on the shorter side, but. You know, that, that, that's the kind of balance we, we, I, I guess we're kind of striving for here. But, um, let's see. Yeah, next time, we will report back to Sholmes with our... With what we've learned. Uh, and, go, and then, you know, go from there, if he's even at home. But, uh, until then, though, uh, I'll see you around.